Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be answering a simple question. Do other planets in our solar system have total solar eclipses like the one that's going to be occurring or maybe has already occurred on August um, of 2017? Today you're going to find out what the solar eclipses may look like on other planets and we're going to talk a little bit about why the eclipse on our planet is actually very unusually cool. Anyway. Welcome to What The Math. Now, this is actually not our solar system at all. As a matter of fact, this is a completely randomly generated solar system somewhere else in Space Engine. And here, the solar eclipses were actually very cool because there are two stars and lots and lots of moons around the planet that's procedurally generated. We're going to go to our own Earth though. And here what we're going to wait for is a total solar eclipse. So there's the moon right there. And as soon as it comes in front of our planet Earth, it's going to happen sometime in the next few seconds. We're going to hopefully experience what's known as um, a total solar eclipse. So maybe sometime soon here we might be able to kind of see it as the moon makes it across the pathway between the sun and our planet Earth. All right, so here we go. We're going to approach our planet Earth a little bit closer and let's actually see what happens as we watch the skies from our planet Earth. So here we go. There comes the moon and hopefully it will pass right in front of the sun if everything goes right. Now, the thing about the solar eclipse on our own planet is that it's unusually rare. And it's rare because it just so happens that the moon is actually about 400 times smaller than the sun. And at the same time, it's also about 400 times closer to us than the sun. In other words, both the moon and the sun appear relatively similar in size in our night sky or I guess just in our sky in general. Now this time there seems to be no eclipse because the moon was actually passing a little bit off course um, from the actual plane of orbit. And, and this happens quite, um, quite a lot because the moon actually kind of wobbles around our Earth. And so sometimes it actually passes um, in front of the sun, but sometimes it goes a little bit above and a little bit below. So this time we didn't get to experience the solar eclipse, unfortunately. But that's not what I really wanted to answer in this video. What I wanted to answer is, do other planets get these? So we know that our planet will receive solar eclipses for at least uh, 600 million more years until moon moves away far enough that no more total solar eclipses will be possible. If we go to the next planet that actually has moons, which is of course Mars, we will realize that here the solar eclipses are going to be dramatically different and that's because of one actual reason. That reason, of course, is that um, the moons of Mars are significantly smaller than the moons of Earth. So uh, the closest moon, which you just saw a few seconds ago, which is right there, that's Phobos, um, it does pass in front of the sun and we've actually even taken pictures of Phobos passing in front of the sun. But when it does, it's it's so much smaller than uh, our own moon that it doesn't actually cover the entire sun. Now here, I'm going to try to demonstrate this by basically zooming in a little bit onto our sun and just watching Phobos pass in front of it. So you can kind of see that as it does, it barely blocks the sun at all. So it's just too, too small. Now, on other planets, specifically gas giants like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus, the total solar eclipse is possible for one simple reason. Or I guess two simple reasons. One of these reasons is that from here, and this is Jupiter, of course, from here, the actual sun looks significantly smaller. So if you were to actually try to find the sun, it would look a lot smaller than it would from our own planet Earth. And so here, even a small object can actually block our sun quite easily. And it happens quite a lot if you were to actually look um, at the, the, all of this happening right in front of uh, Jupiter here. So you'll see that the sun will start blinking quite a lot. Now, even more so, if you were to stand on the surface of one of these moons, 
uh, because all of them orbit in the same plane as um, as Jupiter, you would see quite a lot of total eclipses, especially one large one when, um, and here we're actually going to do this from Europa, uh, when, Sat uh, when Jupiter itself blocks the sun, and this is actually the largest possible solar eclipse you can get here. So none of these moons and none of these planets actually block the sun so that we can actually see what we see from Earth. In other words, on Earth, if we experience a solar eclipse, usually what we see is um, an object, in this case the moon, of course, blocking the photosphere, which is the luminous um, shell right here. And basically the corona, the external part of the sun, um, is still visible. And it's actually a very beautiful effect that pretty much can only be observed from Earth. Uh, on these other objects, um, such as, of course, Jupiter and Saturn, you would never be able to see it. Um, even if you stood on, on a certain moon, um, or if you were to change moons and just go moon hopping. So it's, it's a very rare event to see such an unusual solar eclipse. So for Jupiter and Saturn, we can definitely see total eclipses, but not the same as our planet Earth. Um, and even the object that seems to orbit on its side, known as Uranus, uh, the seventh planet from our sun, also gets eclipses as well. We can actually demonstrate this by kind of landing on one of the moons here. Let's actually just pick a random moon that's slightly larger than all of the others. So here we're going to be watching this from Miranda. And you'll notice that even this moon will occasionally experience uh, the total solar eclipse. Now because uh, Uranus spins on its side, because there is actually almost a 90 degree angle, you don't get total solar eclipses all the time. You do get them certain times of the year, and the year here will last for a very long time. But as you can see, uh, it will take a while before Miranda actually starts experiencing total eclipses. But once it starts, it's going to last for quite many years. So I think right around now, yeah, quite uh, right around now, you'll actually start getting these total solar eclipses because um, Uranus has reached part of its orbit when it starts blocking out uh, the sun once in a while. So here we go. And there, there's that solar eclipse. And at some point, all of the moons will start doing this too. And the other objects, such as, for example, Pluto, um, do get solar eclipses. But in those cases, it's actually quite interesting as well. And so here on Pluto, you do get um, certain solar eclipses from uh, from its companion Charon, which you can kind of see orbiting around it right now, but also only in certain um, parts of its orbit and only during certain times of the year. And year here, once again, takes quite a few uh, Earth years, and in this case, it's 248 Earth years. Um, but the only thing is that the eclipses here are a little bit different. So here, actually, let's go to Sharon for a second, and I'll show you what I mean by this. The eclipse here can only be seen from one, um, from the single surface, basically, from one single side of this planet. And the side is the one that's always facing... Um, that always facing the other object. So because these two objects are tidally locked to each other, basically, if I were to stand right here on the surface of Sharon and I were to run the simulation, you would see that um, I'm basically going to be spinning in such a way that I'm always, always facing Pluto. And once in a while, Pluto will block the sun and that's when you'll actually get to experience total solar eclipse. Now, if I were to stand on the other side of the planet, I would never experience solar eclipse. So because these two objects are tidally locked, that's essentially how it works. And here, once I've advanced time to the year 2100, you can see that it starts getting these total solar eclipses if you basically stand on the side that's facing uh, Pluto, and Pluto will actually be getting the same eclipses from Charon. If, however, I were to escape this side and then land on the opposite side of Sharon, so right here, and basically keep looking at the sun again, I would realize that no more solar eclipses will ever occur for me because it's really the opposite side that gets them. And so 
that's really essentially it. So this kind of gives you an idea that first solar eclipses are possible in other objects and other moons do actually have solar eclipses as well. But on the other hand, the solar eclipse on our own beautiful planet Earth is absolutely and totally unique because our beautiful planet seems to have this object known as the moon that is just so perfectly sized in comparison to the sun. Now, why exactly uh, it is this way and what effects it has on life and other things on our planet is still a mystery today. But maybe one day we'll discover it and maybe we'll even find other planets that have moons that are basically the same size in the sky as the main star. And anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something from this. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye bye.